So let me start by just saying that you should um, check out the videos. If you're ever working on an exercise in Khan Academy, we have videos that are listed here. They're on the right down here under stuck, watch a video. But I know, for example, in your pre-work, there was one exercise at least that um, we went looking and there was no video there, and that's very rare. But should you find that situation, you should go back and recognize that on the left side of the screen, you have exercises you know, listed here, the names of them. They're part of a unit. This unit is called Modeling with Graphs, or a um, topic maybe is better the better way to say it. And in there, it's all the videos and the exercises related to it. So it's a good idea for you to perhaps, you know, work your way through these. Um, watch, watch these videos, okay? So let's start with this one. This one says units and scale of graphs. So um, I haven't even read this. Let's see what it says. The temperature of a pool is currently 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The heater heats the pool one degree Fahrenheit per hour. The relationship between the change in degrees Fahrenheit F and the hours H is shown in the graph below. So in other words, um, F here is the, the change in degrees. So this is so important to recognize what's on the scale like I described before. This does not mean it's two degrees. This means it's been a change of two degrees from the current temperature of 60. And notice that right here at the origin that would not be zero degrees that would be 60 degrees right because that's its current temperature and h of course was hours so we see how many hours are going by notice the scale this one goes up you know, they, they've only got it marked on the scale every two of these blocks here right so each of these lines these grid lines rather each of these grid lines are worth one a value of one Okay, so this is one. It's not written, but there's two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, that's how this axis is read for change in degrees Fahrenheit. This is the axis that represents H, which is the change in hours as time. Time is usually always graphed on the bottom whenever it is um, one of the things being featured in a graph. And over here, let's just look at the scale here. We see the scale shows that each grid line does not get to one but it correlates to here is one at two grid lines so this would be one half and in this case it's a half hour so we see that we go over two grid lines to the right to go one and one grid line up to go one so this point is one one okay even though it's over two up one so always know your scale okay so let's see which of the following statements describing the relationship between the units shown in the graph are true a graph containing this information could you use degrees Celsius and minutes um, well it could um, you'd have to convert I don't know if that's an answer they want but it could if you would convert it okay the origin represents H equals zero the point in time when the temperature of the pool is zero degrees no we know that this is measuring we have to look closely but F is the change in degrees Fahrenheit that's what F is so the origin when it's at zero means there's no change I've already talked about that okay this is the origin represents H equals zero the point in time when the temperature of the pool is still 60 degrees right hour zero that's the origin and um, that is when the pool is still 60 so hour zero H zero right that is the origin and it's just a point in time in terms of the H value. It is a point in time. There's been obviously no change because there's been no change in time. There's been no change in temperature. It is right where the pool currently is at 60 degrees. Okay, so we will select that one and I'm hoping I get this right. Yes, okay. That's a tricky one because I didn't know for sure what they were getting at, but yes, we could convert it and this could be Celsius and this could be minutes. Okay, next question. Let's try doing another one for you here. Considering the follow, consider the following data. So here I have 75 seconds, 5 meters, 120 seconds, 8 meters, 270 seconds, 20 meters. So it says, which of the graphs described in the table below would most reasonably represent the data in the table above? All right. So in this case, I need to go seconds on the second axis right 
and I'm going between 75 and 270. So I'm thinking that, you know, if I've got to go out 300 plus seconds, that um, I, I'm going to need to go more than just, or 270 plus seconds, I'm going to need to go more than one unit at a time. So when I look at the scale of the seconds axis, this represents moving one unit at a one second at a time, that'd be an incredibly long axis to get me out to 270. So instead, I think I'm going to have to go with either one of these, 50 or 50, okay? Now, the next one says meters, 5. For the meter axis, I have 5, 8, and 20. Oh, by the way, 200 is just too big. If I went 200, 400, 600, I wouldn't be able to capture any of the data in between. So it's got to be 50 because one's too small and 200 is too big. Back to the M axis, I can see that um, the scale, I've got to make a decision about the scale. 10 to me is too huge. Um, I'm not going to capture anything. It's going to be very hard for me to show the difference between 5 and 8. Yet there's a big climb there, so it's going to be hard to see anything with precision 5 and 8. And, um, you know, I do need to go out to 20, so that, that might be something that you'd think about, but because I have to capture 5 and 8 together, no, I'm not going to do units of 10. I would, a scale of 10, I wouldn't do that. So instead, I'm going to do either 1 or 2. Personally, I would go with 2, um, so that I have 10 tick marks down on my M axis, whether I place, you know, the meters along the x-axis or more likely I place the meters along the y-axis since seconds is a unit of time and we usually put time on the x-axis. So anyway, if I was putting m along the y-axis, I don't think I'd want to have 20 lines to get to the top. I'd probably do two and I think I could see between the five and the six, you know, five is between four and six if I were counting by twos. So I think I'd be okay. I'm going to go with B. I feel pretty good about that answer. An object is dropped from a height of 3,000 meters to the ground above the ground. Okay, the relationship between the meters the object has traveled m. So this is how many meters it has traveled, and the seconds is shown in the graph below. So this is interesting because it's asking us to recognize that even though this line is going up. We, not, we don't believe for a second that the object dropped from a height of 3,000 meters above the ground is going to go up. So now we have to really understand our axis so it makes a little more sense because intuitively we would normally see a graph come down. So this is the change. This is the, I'm sorry, this is represented as the distance the object has traveled, right? The distance the object has traveled. Um, and obviously starting at 3,000 meters. It doesn't really matter other than to understand the situation. That, but as far as our scale is concerned, this is just from where it was dropped from. And S is time in seconds. So now which of the following statements describes the relationship between the units shown in the graph are true? So a graph containing this information could use kilometers and hours. Okay, yes, it could. Um, it doesn't make sense to use hours because that is not going to take 3,000 meters, is not going to take hours to hit the ground. So, oh, I hate that because this could use, yes, you could do that, but it wouldn't make any sense to. I wouldn't want to do that. So, I, you know, hours, if I was counting hours, that would be ridiculous because it's probably going to land in a matter of minutes, you know, um, at most. Oh boy, okay, and a thousand kilometers, that's just a bad choice, so I may be getting that wrong, we'll see. The origin represents S equals zero, the point in time when the object is on the ground. No, 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 S equals zero is the point in time when the object was dropped, right? S equals zero is the point in time when the object is dropped, not the point in time when the object is on the ground. So here we go, the next one. The origin represents S equals zero, the point in time when the object is still 3,000 meters above the ground. That's right. At this moment, when S equals zero, when the seconds are zero, we haven't started our clock yet because we have not begun, we have not dropped it yet. We start our clock as soon as the drop begins, which is just after zero, and then it falls and moves as we can see there. So I'm going to take this answer and that one. Whew! So even though this, even though the rate this is good to see the scale here would not make sense but it could be done 
So know that they're, when they ask you these questions, you need to know if it could be done, how you would answer it. Okay, that's all I'm going to show you right now. Go ahead and get that unit and scale of graphs exercise done.